Well, the World Juniors have wrapped up and there have been some amazing games, awesome moments, like what even was that? Some highlight reel goals, let's go. Some lackluster performances, looking at you, Sweden. Some breakout players like Stan Coven from Canada who broke out in the elimination round. And one huge upset. Seems like there's always an upset. And while I don't want to say I predicted it, because I didn't, it seems like every year there's at least one big surprise. This year, the Czechs pulled it off, upsetting the USA in the quarters. It's an understatement to say that that's a disappointing finish for the defending champions. Now, if you watched some of the competition and started wondering where are they playing in this upcoming season, let's take a look. Let's start with the obvious. Uh, of course, it's Connor Bedard, who, in spite of being one of the youngest players competing, was one of the tournament's leading scorers. You just can't ignore him when he's on the ice. He's so fun to watch. Bedard is, let's face it, will be the first overall pick in the upcoming 2023 draft. He set a record this past season as the youngest player to ever hit 50 goals in the Western Hockey League. He was second in the WHL in goals and fourth in points as a 16-year-old. He finished with an even 100 points, needing only 62 games to get there. He will be returning to the Regina Pats and probably shredding that league to pieces. It will be interesting to see what records he sets. And now you know teams in the NHL will be trying hard to be at the bottom to get him come June with the first pick, so we'll have to watch. This will be a storyline throughout the season. We're calling it Tank hard for Bedard. So Bedard also had amazing chemistry in the World Juniors with Team Canada's captain Mason McTavish. McTavish is a Ducks prospect, drafted third overall in 2020. He showed great leadership, not surprisingly. He's a big, skilled forward who dominates when he makes his mind up to. Maybe he saw Bedard getting a lot of headlines at the start and said, wait a minute, I can do this. McTavish did play with the Ducks last season in his NHL debut. He scored his first career goal and got an assist. He was the youngest Duck player ever to score a goal. So he was injured and was sent down where he recorded two points in three games for the AHL Gulls. He finished with two goals and one assist in nine games overall for the Ducks before being reassigned to the OHL so they didn't burn a year of his entry-level contract. He did play in the Memorial Cup with the Hamilton Bulldogs. He stayed out to watch the St. John Sea Dogs celebrate at the end and kind of used that as motivation. It's one of the reasons he wanted to play with Team Canada as well to get that championship. Then there's Kent Johnson. He was really a terrific offensive player for Canada and showed why in that third game against Czechia when he decided to pull off the Michigan goal. Got the puck back there, and uh, so I had enough time, and there's no D-man at the post, and uh, a little room up there, so I uh, just went for it, and was so glad it worked out. He is a University of Michigan star, coincidentally, and drafted fifth overall in 2021 by the Columbus Blue Jackets. He played his nine games with the team last year and got three assists. Here's a look at his stats overall. At the start of the tournament, Johnson seemed a little frustrated, getting some chances, but not scoring the way he was used to. Definitely broke through. Of course, he was one of the overtime heroes at the end when he did this. He should be able to break through in the NHL with Columbus. Can you imagine seeing him up there with Goudreau and Laine? He looks like he'll be a top talent for years to come. I just want to mention Ridley Gregg. He did everything for Team Canada, including this highlight reel goal. He changes the angle and flicks it. He was great on the penalty kill with his shot blocking. He did get hurt in the quarterfinals and didn't play the final two games. He was drafted by the Senators in the first round of the 2020 draft with the 28th overall pick. I can't help but remember this goal he scored in a preseason game. That was awesome, and Senators fans should be excited to see what he can do. Looking at his stats over the past few years, he was outstanding with the Brandon Weed Kings in the WHL. 
In his draft year, he was more than a point per game. And last year, he really tore it up with 26 goals, 37 assists, and 63 points. He might crack the Sens lineup, but they have a strong group of young players. So we might see him with the farm team for a year before he makes the jump. Also worth a quick mention, goaltender Dylan Garand. He's a New York Rangers fourth round pick in 2020, 103rd overall. He's coming off a really good season with the Kamloops Blazers of the WHL. He was the CHL goalie of the year and posted a save percentage of 921 or better for three straight seasons with Kamloops. And good news, Flyers fans. One of the best prospects in the whole tournament belongs to the Flyers. It's Emil Andrea. Sweden definitely looked a little sluggish, to put it mildly, and they had a rough game in the quarters against Finland. It seemed like they just couldn't score. But the one bright spot was defenseman Emil Andre. He's the captain of the Swedes. Andre was drafted 54th overall in 2020. Being no stranger to pressure situations back home in Sweden, he spent last year with HV71 as the team successfully got themselves promoted back up to the SHL after a disappointing relegation the season before. He's 5'9", 181 pounds, so he's not a big player. He's more along the lines of Kimo Timonen, if you remember him. And look, he's got the swagger and attitude. Seems like he'll fit in perfectly with the Flyers. Another Swedish defenseman who was a standout is Simon Edvinson. He was selected in the first round, sixth overall by the Detroit Red Wings. Surprise, surprise. He was a real workhorse for the Swedes during the tournament, logged over 22 minutes of ice time per game, and scored this goal with just putting in a day's work, it looked like. So the Red Wings made him the sixth overall pick during the 2021 draft. And they'll be giving him every chance to crack the lineup at training camp this fall. He's six foot six, two 209 pounds, and the Red Wings could really use a player like that. We couldn't go forward without a quick word about Latvia. They went head-to-head against Czechia in a huge game with playoff implications in the round robin. And then they shocked them by pulling off the first true upset of the tournament. They had a great performance from starting goaltender Bruno Bruveris, and the highlight performance was probably defenseman and team captain Ralph Spurgmanis. He took over that game and scored three straight goals to seal the win for Latvia. It was their first ever preliminary round victory at the World Juniors, and they gave Sweden absolutely everything they had in a tight quarterfinal game. So cheers to them. The next prospect to look at is Maple Leafs pick Topi Niemela, the defenseman. He was named the top defenseman in the 2021 tournament, and he was outstanding again this year. He is a third-round pick of the Maple Leafs, 64th overall from 2020. Both he and Ronnie Hirvonen were drafted that year. Hirvonen is Finland's captain, and they've both made solid strides since then. Niemela is a smart, what you would call puck-moving defenseman. He has a high level of competence and seems like hockey sense with the puck on his stick. He might remind Leaf fans of a young Thomas Caberle. So looking at his stats, he is on loan to Carpat in the Finnish league again for next season. Another player to really keep an eye on from the Finnish team is Joachim Kamel. He was the 17th overall pick this past summer by the Nashville Predators. He was thought to be a top 10 talent, and so getting him at 17 was a real break for the Predators. And he scored some great looking goals in the World Juniors and also set up his line mates on that top line and top power play. Kamel is signed through the 2023-24 season with JYP in the Liga. But after that, it's more than likely that he comes over to North America and joins the Predators, whether it be with the Milwaukee Admirals in the AHL or on the full-time roster. Now, I could mention Atu Ratu here, but I was really impressed with Robbie Yarventi. He looked lethal on that Finnish power play with his great release and seems to have some deception in the offensive game. He is yet another prospect of the Ottawa Senators, taken in the second round of the 2020 draft with the 33rd overall pick. So he's already played a full season with the Belleville Senators last year. He was at 19, one of the youngest players in the AHL, and he more than held his own with 33 points in 70 games. He really looks to have some offensive upside that the Senators could use, so we'll see if he makes it. The standout for that surprising Czech team was Captain Jan Mishak. 
He was drafted 48th overall by the Montreal Canadiens in the 2020 draft. He really shone in the OHL this season. He captained that Czechia team and was sort of the symbol of how they played. In the quarterfinals, he was instrumental as he tied up the game late in the first. He has really good vision and puck handling skills. Seems like he could be a top six forward. Most likely, he'll be playing with the Laval Rocket this year in the AHL before he moves up to the big team. Moving on to some USA players to watch. They did have some bright spots, believe it or not. One of those is Matthew Coronado. The Calgary Flames had just one prospect playing at this year's World Juniors, and he was one of the stars of Team USA. He's the first round pick from the 2021 draft and number 13 pick overall. He's a talented goal scorer. He was named 2021 USHL Forward of the Year after his second season with the Chicago Steel. He had a franchise record 48 goals in 51 regular season games. He had 85 points total and added another 9 goals and 13 points in only 8 playoff games. So he looks like a true offensive talent. He stood out even though the team ultimately fell short. He's a right shot, right winger, and the Flames can really use someone like that. He'll probably finish out the NCAA calendar and then join the Flames for the home stretch of the regular season and the playoffs. Next up, we have Carter Mazur. He was named Team USA's Player of the Game in their quarterfinals loss. He's a Detroit Red Wings prospect, drafted in the third round of the 2021 draft, number 70 overall. He had a pair of goals and an assist in the USA's 7-1 win against Switzerland in the round robin. Mazur finished with a team-leading five goals with seven points, and he was named one of the top three players in the tournament for the U.S., along with Thomas Bordalo and defenseman Luke Hughes, and we'll get to them next. Mazur is headed into his second season at the University of Denver after helping the Pioneers win the NCAA championship last season. So one of those top forwards is Thomas Bordalo. He's a San Jose second-round draft pick. He played eight games in the NHL last year and got five assists. He's small but speedy and might remind some people of Mitch Marner or Patrick Kane, although that's pretty much used for every small, skilled forward who comes along. But in this case, it's really true. He's 5'9", he's got exceptional speed and puck protection. Here's a look at his stats. He was drafted 38th overall by the Sharks in the 2020 draft, and his father is former NHL player Sebastian Bordalo. All right, so I know I'm a biased Leaf fan, but I had to include Matthew Nyes, if only because of this. And I hope that nose pick becomes a meme, or at least that he gets a nickname out of it, like Matthew Nose. He was drafted 57th overall by the Maple Leafs in the 2021 entry draft. He played for University of Minnesota and was going to come up to the big team, but decided to stay for another year. So he'll play there and then most likely finish out by joining the Leafs at the end of the season just in time for them to try and break that first round jinx. And who doesn't like watching a Hughes brother play when they get the chance? Youngest brother Luke, who played with University of Michigan and is probably one of the best offensive defensemen in that whole tournament. He looked good overall, but was definitely part of that disappointment. He's the fourth overall selection by New Jersey in the 2021 draft. Last year, he led all NCAA defensemen in goals and points with 17 goals and 22 assists for 39 points in 41 games. And Hughes will return to Michigan for his sophomore season. He might even be a Hobie Baker candidate and make his case for the NHL after this season. He might turn out to be the best Hughes brother of all three. That's it for our wrap-up of some exciting World Junior players. Let us know what you think and who you're excited to see this upcoming season. I'm sure I missed one of your picks, so go ahead and let me know in the comments. We'll be back with more NHL news and discussion, so hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next game day. See what I did there? <laughs>